Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I draw ginger hair. So be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just starting the study as I normally would by placing a center point in the middle of my board and then I put a center point on my reference image. They're both scaled up to six inch by six inch so it's just a small study. And now I do the outline is just use that center point as a place of reference and then from there I just use angles to try and find the location of different areas. Just see everything as shapes and then work out the angle from that centre point whereabouts it's located. Now I'm using a Carbothello 708 pencil grey, uh, which is great pencil because it's a similar colour to the pastel matte I'm using. And when you rub it out, it just leaves a very nice ghost image. If you would like a more in-depth view of how I do the outline, I have got a video on my channel which is three ways how to draw the outline, if you want to check that out after the video. These are the basic pencils I'm using for the underdrawing, just to keep it simple. Now doing an underdrawing really takes the tension out of all the hair because what you're doing really is just trying to get some sort of form in there just using a, a few colours. This stage is all about correcting the outline as well, just getting the shape and the feel of the actual hair. So I just see it as shapes and movement and flow and just let go just open the heart let go of the mind and just focus on how it feels and the movement of, of it and sense the energy of the person that's shining through the hair as well even at this stage it's always a good idea to get that sort of feeling down before we start putting on the rich colors using a Rembrandt stick and a Contia Paris ultramarine blue there just for the background just put a little bit in just so it gives me an idea of the colour note of that now initially I've selected these colours for the rich colours but this will always change I always try things out and then experiment and it develops as I go along but that's an idea of what I initially picked up first thing I do is always put the darkest darks in there so what I'm trying to do is anchor the actual drawing or study by trying to work out where the darkest darks are and compare the similar colours so I try and find all those similar colours then I do a similar sort of thing with the lights as well just get a few lights in there just experimented with the burnt umber, burnt sienna and lemon yellow there just to see if that would work over that light pastel I put on. Just playing with it and just to try things out. That's, initially that's what I always do with a painting, just to see, you know, to pick one point uh, to initially when you put the rich colours and just try and, and play about with it and see what works. It just saves loads of time then if you can find a formula to actually uh, what sort of colours to use to get the sort of effect you want. You can't always do it. Um, I, it, it with this one it tended to change as it, as it went along so you'll, you'll see that when I, when I start putting the other colours on. But you've got to start somewhere so what I've done is just put the lights in. I've got the darkest darks in there and I'm putting the lightest lights in and then what I'll do is try and glaze over uh, with certain colours just to see if I can get that sort of vibrancy and freshness before I move on to the mid-tones. I thought I'd get that skin in there first so I'm using these basic sort of flesh tone colours which is yellow ochre, white, warm red and olive green so I'm just using that roughly getting it in there uh, so it just gives me something to gauge then so you've got 
some different areas light and dark and to sort of to give you a balance so from there you've got a, an anchor uh, so you can actually try and work out the other tones there so I'm working on a nine value system which is four lights four darks and a mid tone so I'm just just playing just trying to get a balance just to start with now to mark up the strands of hair I'm using the Caran d'Ache Flesh Tone 5% and the Flesh Tone I'm using and then just glazing over them with the Burnt Sienna over the top of it. If you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Just slowing it down now to real time so you can see how I'm uh, doing that. Just putting those strands of hair in and then just working out the pattern. Try and be as close as you can to the reference image. It just makes everything more relaxed then, you see. So all these, you know, the underdrawing and will all help to keep things relaxed because if you can make the actual pattern the same or the movement of it, it, it becomes a lot easier and less stressful then rather than just putting random strands in so I try and keep it as close as I can do it's no, never exact but it's just close enough uh, just to get the right feel and all I'm doing is trying to get that chroma right so I'm going again the shadows in which is the dark brown here from the Caran d'Ache and then using that Caran d'Ache flesh tone to get that chroma for the lights. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their generous support every month. I really appreciate it. It does make a massive difference. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower, more in-depth videos, please check the link in the description below. Just giving you a little bit more real time again just to show you how I'm doing this. Just taking my time, just really feeling the energy of the person that's shining through the hair and connect to that. And don't see it as hair because if you start to name these things, uh, what it does, it creates tension because you look at all the detail and it just can freeze you if, you, if you're not careful. So what I tend to do is just, just take my time, just see it as light and shade and flow uh, squint my eyes just to get the value because this this stage here is not the detail stage all this is is a rich stage where you're getting the the value something more like and the chroma so you're working on chroma and value what i am aware of as well is actually making sure that i don't go too heavy with the pigment because if I fill that tooth up too much on the pastel mat, when I start to put those really fine details in, there'd be too much of a slide to it and there'd not be anything for the actual pigment to sort of grab onto. So I just need a little bit of tooth left on there. So when I do put those fine details on, they actually stop where you actually draw them. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me because this will help the channel to grow. Another thing I'm aware of as well is that I don't put a time limit on myself uh, so I forget about time I'll just be in the moment and just let it take as long as it takes that's my motto. Uh, because if you start putting a time limit on things, you start cutting corners and you, you can get stressed out as well because you wonder how the hell am I going to do all this lot. Then you start looking at what you've got to do and then you lose being in the moment and that causes problems. So just let go, just enjoy the process. These stages are, are really fun to do because you're not focusing on too much detail. The, the it's just preparation the final detail will be later on in this video um, but it's just 
you know, sort of building up that preparation and keep sort of building it up, building it up. And it's just a case of like putting that light colour in, glaze over the top, light colour, glaze over the top, putting the shadows in. Sometimes you use a bit of blue in the shadows, sometimes a bit of cold red um, to create depth and to give the hair body as well. I always try and keep a peripheral vision as well, so I'm, I'm aware of everything at once. So being aware of all the different tones and comparing what shade matches which shade and try and always try and keep that balance. It's a good idea to keep looking in the mirror as well just to make sure everything's balancing up. So now to the final stage which is the details. These are the colours I'm using here for that. With this stage, the final detail stage is to actually just to really relax and just to open up and sense the balance of the tones. So you squint in your eyes for the values and then open the eyes for the colour. So we're doing both. And um, what I'm using now is putting a little bit of warm red in there, which creates more of a gingery colour. Um, so I'm just glazing all over with the red. And then what I'll do then is go over this glaze and subtly it up with other colours uh, but put those fine details in as well as I go along so it's basically it's just getting everything sort of more of a balanced state um, and just keep adding t to it you, you, you just have to keep flowing with it and just let your instincts take you where you need to go um, rather than just focusing on one point I tend to sort of go all over the place so you, one minute you'll see me working on one area then you'll then I'll sense that another area needs doing so then I'll move to that I've always found ginger hair to be very quite difficult to do to get that realism and the way that um, I've been experimenting is to actually uh, create different shadows I mean there's different subtleties in those shadows sometimes you need a bit of purple and a bit of black as well and sometimes you probably need a bit of a cold red or warm red so you have to experiment with the shadow areas that makes then the highlights more pop and also it creates more of the subtle other values to look more balanced as well so getting those sort of shadows and getting that sort of 3d look to it by adding those cold and warm colors to the brown or the black does make a difference now for the flyaway hair that's going over the background. I'm using the Caran d'Ache flesh tone and varying the pressure and just letting it just scrape across the actual pastel mat. There's enough tooth on there just to take enough pigment off what I need, but adding a little bit of pressure if we need it lighter, less pressure for when it's very faint. And for the shadow ones, I'm do using a dark brown, like a dark umber burnt umber and just again varying the pressure of the pencil uh, just to create the different tonal values also using a little bit of uh, burnt sienna as well amongst it for the highlights the very little glints I'm using the flesh tone I think it's ten percent or five percent, one or the other. I'm just mixing one and using both really, just trying out which one looks best. But then just glaze over it here and there, just just to get rid of those edges. So I'm just using a bit of the uh, ultramarine blue, which is the background colour. I'm just sort of um, you know, sharpening things up as well if it need to be, um, but just subtling the actual line because it can look a bit unnatural you see so you need to sort of go over those these little glints with other colors just to subtle it up
and just break up the line as well so it's not a solid line just a little bit of uh, a subtlety here and there and a glint here and there so it's just a matter of just playing about with it really now where the hair meets the skin tone I'm just using a bit of yellow ochre there um, putting the white in just get that sort of direction of where things are and then just glaze over them with that yellow ochre and warm red So it's just a case of persevering really with it and just like I say just getting a balance of it um, I know this is just a study so I haven't done that much work on the flesh tone if you want to see more of me work with um, flesh colours I've got loads of videos on my channel so please check those out so it's just a case really of of just keep playing keep building it up and keep looking at a hole at this time now is is a good time to keep looking in the mirror take it into take the study into another room and have a look at it with different light source take a photograph with your camera just to see what it looks like turn it upside down do all sorts of things just to double check to see if it's all right and everything's balanced and just keep uh, changing it accordingly You'll get a gut feeling when you know it's right because you can start to overwork it if you're not careful. So there's a tendency um, to overrender. So just l listen to your instinct and, and you'll know when it's the time to stop. Hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, here's the actual study at the right angle. If you would like to see more of my work, here's a few links for you to check out.